Hi there, I'm Eitan, and welcome back to the Wix Wiz. Today we're going to be talking about this error, which you might have seen if you were trying to fetch data from a third-party API within Wix, and it's something called cores, and it is the annoyance of almost every developer at some point uh, during their career. And today I'm going to be showing you how to deal with it in Wix, as well as debuting uh, my new channel. So if you want to learn all about that and more, let's get started. Okay, so before we talk solutions, I'm going to replicate the issue and generate a cores error within Wix. And hopefully that will indicate to you whether you're watching the right video or not. So in order to do that, what I've done is I have created a new uh, Wix Studio website. Uh, everything that I'm going to be showing you here is true also for the classic Wix editor. And I am currently inside of the code panel, so I've turned on dev mode or code mode. And essentially what I'm going to be trying to do is implement an API call here uh, within the home page code. So the front end code, page code of my Wix website. So currently I am in the home page uh, and I'm trying to implement the code over here. So what I've done already is I've just added in this endpoint over here, which is a server of my own that I've deployed with an endpoint that upon receiving a get request will send back some mock data. Okay, so simulating a very simple API call. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to clear out all of this boilerplate code. And I'm going to create a new function which is going to make a get request to this API. So let's go ahead and create that function. So it's going to be an asynchronous function. And I'll call it um, get API data, let's say. Okay, it doesn't really matter what you call it. And here what we're going to be utilizing is fetch. So within Wix, uh, we have a specific library that is built to be used as fetch, and that's Wix fetch. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to import fetch up here from Wix fetch. Okay, so this is already something that's slightly different than what you might have to do if what if you were using vanilla JavaScript. Um, but generally, the fetch within the Wix library works identical to the classic fetch. There are some limitations. I'm not going to get into that. Um, so let's go ahead and make that request over here. So what I'm going to say is const response. Okay, the response that we get back from the request, I'm going to store that in a variable. And then I'm going to call fetch here. And I'm going to just pass in that endpoint for the API. And since this is a get request, I don't need to specify methods or anything like that. It's a super simple server. So theoretically, this is something that should work. Uh, then I will attempt to extract the data from the response. So I'll say here uh, const data equals to await response.json. And what I'll do here is I'll just log the data. Okay, pretty simple. And I will wrap this inside of a try catch just so we can catch any errors that we have. So try catch. And I'll just log an error if we have one. So console.log error. Okay, very, very simple setup. And the last thing I'm going to do here is just make sure to call that function here inside of the get inside of the on ready, sorry, get API data. Okay, so that means as soon as our page loads and the on ready function runs, this function should run as well. This is the basic setup. And now what I'll do is I will publish the site and head over to the live site so that we can see that this is throwing essentially a cores error. Okay, so here we are on the live site and I've opened up my uh, console logs here. And you can see here that we are indeed getting an error. So we failed to fetch and that is because uh, the request has been blocked by cores policy. Okay, so what is this cores policy? This cores policy is essentially a system that is implemented by the browser in order to protect you, the user, from certain attacks that can happen when requesting data from a server that is not the same domain as the page you are on, in a nutshell. Uh, and I'm going to hop in now and explain how to solve this for Wix. If you do want to go more in depth in understanding what cores is, why it exists, and different approaches there are for solving it, except for the one that I'm showing you here, 
then I explain that all in depth in a video on my new channel, uh, which I'll be linking up to above. So that's really just general knowledge about cores and different approaches from like a general web dev perspective. Uh, in terms of Wix, I'll be showing you now what the approach you should be taking is in order to prevent this kind of error. Okay, so back here on our Wix site, uh, if you kind of watched the background about the cores video or understood what I said in half a sentence before, then you'll probably understand that the issue here is stemming from the fact that we are trying to fetch this data from the front end of our website, from the client side code, from the page code, okay, right over here. So now we're in the home page, and essentially this data request should, in most cases, there are some edge cases, again, if you watch my other video, then you'll understand this a little better, but in I would say 90 something percent of the cases, especially if it's an API that you didn't build yourself, you will want to implement this code on the back end, on the server, because there, there is no chance that you will hit a cores error. Uh, and some of you might not even know that Wix has this option of having a back end and a server versus client side code. So that's where I think a lot of people um, make that mistake. And if you want to solve this, all you'll have to do is go over here to the code panel and find the public and backend code. And then here you'll have a section called backend. And this is essentially a, ser a dedicated server for your website uh, that Wix hosts. And essentially it has all of the properties of a server in the sense that it has security and that it can interact with other servers as a server. Uh, and all we'll have to do here is add in a new web module. And I'll just call this you know, API call. And here uh, we'll build out the web module. And again, this is not a video teaching about how to use the Wix backend. So I touch on the Wix backend in many, many, many videos uh, in my uh, on my channel. I have a whole series dedicated to making third party API calls. Um, I'll try to remember to link that as well. And I'll just show a basic implementation here of what we were trying to do on the front end. So I'm going to get rid of all of this boilerplate code here. Get rid of that. And I'm going to leave this import because we're going to need it. And I'll just call this get. Let me zoom in here. I'll call this method get my data. Okay, very straightforward. I'm going to leave the permissions at anyone. And here uh, we're not going to take in any parameters. And essentially, this is a function that will run when we call this web method from the front end. And I'm just going to grab the code that we had here in the front end. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab this entire function. And I will head over here to our back end. And I'm going to paste this function right over here. Uh, you see here that fetch and endpoint are highlighted in red. So I'll need to import fetch here as well. So let me do that right now. Import fetch from Wix fetch. And I will copy over the endpoint. So I'm just going to grab this control C and just again, paste that here as a global variable. Okay, so we have everything here. And I could do one of two things. So what I could do is either I can uh, move this code, okay, like this into the actual function here and make this function asynchronous, okay, like that. Or I could call this function here within the web method. Either way works. Uh, and if we want, we also can test this web method inside of the backend. Uh, so we could do that using this blue button right over here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click that. And I'm gonna hit run. And there we go. So here we have the console log with the mock data from our uh, from our request. Okay, so this is the data that was supposed to come back from the server before, but we kind of hit the cores issue. So here we can already see that we're not having any issue with cores. And now we have to discuss how we're going to get that data from our server to our front end. So essentially, what we're going to want to do is call this web method from our front end. So the way this works within Wix is that essentially we just import these web methods as if we were importing a JavaScript module or a function from another file. And we don't use 
fetch and uh, HTTP requests in order to interact with our backend server within Wix. And I feel like this is another stumbling point that some people who are maybe from a development background but are new to the Wix ecosystem uh, might stumble. And in order to implement this, all we need to do is just grab essentially the name of the web method that we have right over here and then head to our front end and import that here. So I'm going to import that here at top level, import, and just the name of the web method, and then the file that we're importing from. So that would be backend slash, um, uh, what was it called? API call dot web. Okay. And now instead of using this get API data function to actually make the request, I'm just going to call the backend uh, web module. Uh, so I'm going to go over here and say uh, const data equals to await get my data. And I'm just going to log that data. Console.log data. Okay, so now that I have that uh, set up, I'm just going to get rid of some of the things that we're not using here. So I'm no longer using fetch here. So I can go ahead and get rid of that. I'm no longer using the endpoint here, so I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that. And now I'm going to publish the site and head back to the live site to show you what this looks like now. Okay, so here I am on the live site. And as you can see here, I hope in the console, uh, we are actually now getting the data back from our own server that was interacting with the third party server. Okay, so to wrap it up, what we've done is we've managed to circumvent the cores policy and cores error by actually interacting with the third party server via our own server as opposed to our front end code from within the browser. And this is a pretty standard approach to dealing with cores. The general philosophy behind it is not special to Wix, but I think that some people who are not familiar with the division of responsibility between Wix backend and front end or are kind of used to building their own applications uh, might not understand the nuances of this. And that's why I wanted to share it with you today. Uh, if you enjoyed this content, uh, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more cool Wix related videos every week. And don't forget my new channel that you can check out with more general web development information that I linked to below and before. Uh, and I'd really love to see you there as well. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.